Hello students, I welcome you all once again to the e-learning sessions of the automobile engineering. Myself Hardik Shah and during this lecture series, we will discuss some interesting topics in the subject of automotive electricals and electronics. Okay, we have already started a new chapter that is lighting system in automotive, okay, in automobile cars and our today's topic in this video is HID lamp and other different lamps in the lighting systems, okay. I hope you will see this video till the end to completely understand this topic and gain your skills in automobile engineering. I also request you to note down any queries which arises during the lecture and ask it in comment section. I will try to solve all the queries as soon as possible, okay. So without wasting much time, now let's start our today's video. So what is high intensity discharge lamps? Okay, the HID that means the latest headlight development is the high intensity discharge that is HID lamp. Okay, these headlamps put out three times more light and twice the light spread on the road than conventional halogen headlamps. Okay, that we have just uh, discussed in previous session. They also use about the two third less power to operate and will last two to two, three times as long. So HRD lamps produce light in both ultraviolet and the visible wavelength causing the highway signs and other reflective materials to glow. Okay, these lamps do not relay, rely on a glowing element for the light. Instead, the headlamp contains a pair of the electrodes similar to the spark plug electrodes surrounded by the gas. Okay, so the electrode is the end of the electrical conductor that produces a spark. Now light is produced by an arc that jumps from the electrode to the another like a welder's arc. Okay, so the presence of the inert gas amplifies the light given off by the arcing. Now more than 15,000 volt are needed to jump the gap in the electrodes. Now to provide this voltage, a voltage booster and the controllers are required. Okay, once the gap is bridged, only 80 volt is needed to keep the current flow across the gap. Now the large light output of the HID allows them to be smaller in size. Okay, now HIDs will usually show signs of the failure before they burn out. Now headlamps are mounted so that their aim can be adjusted. Fine. Most circular and rectangular lamps have three adjustment points. The sealed beam unit is placed in an adjustable mounting which is retained by the stationary mounting. Many cars have decorative bezel that hides this hardware while still allowing the lamp adjustment. Okay. Composite headlamps use a similar two point adjustment system but require the use of the special adapters with the alignment devices. Okay. So this was all about the HID lamp and it is very important topic. Next is concealed headlamps. Now what is that? Another automotive styling feature is the concealed headlamps, either stationary lamps behind the movable door or lamps that move in and out of the car's bodywork. Okay. So the doors can be metal or clear plastic. Now electric motors or vacuum actuators operate headlamp concealing the mechanism. Okay. Which is operating a headlamp concealing mechanism. Now electrically operated systems usually have a relay controlling current flow to the motor. Okay. So vacuum actuated systems work with the engine vacuum stored in the reservoir. Okay. Now different laws require. Now our laws requires that the main headlamp switch control the concealing mechanism on the lead model cars and that pop up the headlamps that rise out of the hood must not come on until they have completed 75% of the travel. Okay. So switches used with the electrically operated headlamp doors have additionally contacts to the activate this relay. Fine. Now vacuum actuated systems usually have a vacuum switch attached to the headlamp switch. Okay. Now some older cars may have a separate switch to control the door. Okay. So all the concealed headlamps systems also must have a manual opening method such as a crank or the lever as a backup system. Okay. Now earlier cars have a clear plastic lens cover 
or firing over the sealed beam units and it is not legal nowadays okay so it is not provided in today's car next is automatic headlamp systems and how it works so a photo cells and a solid state circuitry are used to control the headlamp operation in many vehicles today okay a system can turn the lamp on and off on the past models they control the high and the low beam switching fine now some parts can be adjusted but defective parts cannot be repaired so all the automatic systems have manual switches to override the automatic functions when any part is in malfunction or it is in failure fine so this was about the automatic headlight systems next is on off control what is that in that so the photo cell or the ambient light sensor used in automatic system may be mounted on the top of the instrument panel which is facing upwards so it is exposed to the natural outside light now in some older, uh, older application it may be mounted to the rear view mirror uh, assembly facing outwards for the exposure to the outside light so the photo cell voltage is amplified and applied to the solid state control module now the photo cell voltage decreases at the outside light decreases so most photo cells are adjustable for earlier or later turn on so at a predetermined low light and the voltage level the module turns the headlamps on okay so the module often contains time delay circuitry so that what will happen when the vehicle is momentarily in dark or light such as when passing from the tunnels or the bridges or the street lamp the headlights do not flash on off okay when the automobile's ignition is turned off the headlights remain on for a specified length of time and then they will be turned off okay so this was the function of the on off control in automotive systems now let's see about the common automotive bulbs which are in use first seal beam uh, and composite headlamps are very specialized type of the lamp bulbs now the other bulbs used in automotive lighting circuits are much smaller and less standardized now each specific bulb has a unique trade number that is used consistently by all the manufacturers most small automotive bulbs are clear and they are mounted behind the colored lenses okay some applications may call for the red or an amber that is amber bulb okay now some automotive bulbs uses either a brass or a glass wedge base now bulb with a brass base fit into the matching socket so the sig uh, single or double contact on the base of the bulb are insulated contacts for the bulb filaments fine so a matching contact in the socket supplies current to the bulb filament okay this is happens in this so a single contact bulb contains one filament a double contact bulb has a two filament so the ground end of the bulb filament is connected directly to the base of the bulb which is grounded through the contact of the socket simple okay so in many cases a separate ground wire lead from the socket to the ground connection now all the double contact bulbs are indexed so that they will fit into the socket in only one way and this is called an indexed base fine next is wedge base bulbs so what are that so wedge base bulbs generally have been used in a uh, instrument cluster and the other interior lighting applications now this bulb and the optical part of the bulb are actually one piece formed glass formed a glass shell with four filament wire extending through the base and the crimped around it to form the external contacts okay so the design locates the contacts accurately permitting the direct electrical contact with the socket which contains shoulder to hold the bulb in a place fine so the bulb is installed by the push light or you can say pushing in a straight socket with no indexing required so wedge based bulbs with a new socket designs were introduced in 1987 as the replacement of the brass based bulb okay for the exterior lighting applications now the wires of the low profile plastic socket exit from the side instead of the rear okay so this reduces the possibility of the wire damage and permits the socket 
to be used in more confined areas okay since the introduction of this base socket design a series of this bulbs has been made available in both clear and the amber versions fine so this was all about the different types of lamps or you can say bulb in lighting system okay i wish you got the clear idea about this therefore if you have any more to know or any any specific query please let me know i will surely try to respond as soon as possible okay in the next lecture we will discuss about the other lamps in detail okay like hazard's lamp tail lamp and stop lamps okay i hope you like this video thank you so much stay tuned goodbye and keep learning